Welcome to a new video, this is Mo from Epsi Master Path and I'm glad to be your presenter today. In today's video, we're going to be shedding the light on how you can make the best use of the latest technique provided by Unsloth to find you in a large language model in a conversational chat template. Previously, we were collecting datasets from PDFs and CSVs and then we were creating a custom chat template so that the LLMs can understand the data and then the fine tuning begins. In today's video, we're going to be having the data in CSV format converting the CSV format into a shared GPT format, followed by a conversion to a hugging face format. And lastly, we're going to be using the chat template for Llama 3.1. This is done to increase the accuracy of the fine tuning and the output. We're going to be coupling this with deployment on OpenWeb UI and judging the accuracy of the fine tuned model. And now, without further ado, let's get started. I've explained in a couple of the previous videos how to install Unsloth on your machine in details. In this video, I'm going to be shedding the light on a new method that has now been much more simpler, which is using pip. So previously, I've explained how to install it using conda uh, because pip was quite complex on the GitHub repository of Unsloth. But now pip is quite straightforward. You would need to install Python 3 virtual environment on your machine for your type in sudo apt install Python 3 dash v virtual environment and then you'll be prompted to enter your password. And after you do that, you can then have the environment of your choice named by typing Python 3 and then space and then dash M and then space and then virtual environment and then the name of your environment. You can name it however you please. I've named it Unsloth underscore environment as um, advised by the Unsloth team. And then you need to activate that environment by typing source and then Unsloth underscore env and then forward slash bin forward slash activate. And then once the environment has been activated, you can then upgrade the pip and then install the GitHub repository of Unsloth with all of the dependencies. It's going to take you a little while because it's going to be downloading Triton, which is a huge package, PyTorch, Xformers, Hugging Face, Hub, uh, PEFT, Accelerate, XForm, there's lots of other bits and pieces. So it's going to take you um, a little while, maybe, depending on your internet connection, maybe five to ten minutes. And once that is installed, you can also make sure that you need to install uh, the CUDA toolkit. And I'll put the link on how to do that in the description below, because you can download it um, directly from the NVIDIA website. And that one is quite needed for dealing with the large language models and how they are incorporated with your graphics memory. Once you have activated your environment and you do have uh, an IDE installed, such as VS Code or PyCharm, and you do have Python language installed in your machine, you can then choose the kernel here on the top right to be your environment in VS Code. And then you can start by importing uh, necessary packages such as supervised trainer, transformers, and datasets, and then importing the actual Unsloth library and the sub packages. Um, that it contains and then you can move on to importing your model of choice in this case i'm going to be focusing on the llama 3.1 8 billion parameters instruct model which is going to be fitting for the purpose of this video i'm going to be putting the link to all of the models available by unsloth in the description of this video you can access them by going to the hugging face hugging face co website forward slash unsloth and then you'll find all of the models generated by unsloth or tweaked by unsloth and available for download for free under the apache license which allows you to have the large language models used for commercial purposes the next step relies on converting the data set that we do possess into a shared GPT format. So the data that I do have in the background is a very simplistic CSV file where I have three columns, the ID column, question and answer. So the question is, give me you a good example that you can find on a specific area of competence and a specific level, and then it spits out the answer in here. So I need to change this format into the following format from system and then the value is you are an assistant that will help our ICSFC candidates formulate the submission and then a value from the human being, which is the actual question, and then a value from the GPT, which is the actual answer. And I will explain why I'm doing that in the next step. So I started with importing the CSV file and putting it into a pandas data frame and then create a new, create a new column called train because I'm going to be using the data as training data. And that's going to be the tag, which is going to be used later on in the supervised training step. And then the conversion is by having a column called conversations and the that column will collate 
the questions as from human and answers from the GPT and also the from system value and that's going to be quite important for the next step as well and then having added the train column and the conversation column it's now time to delete all ones i don't need them and then i've printed the, the data set here and that's what you could see here so the first column is called train or the first new column now is called train and the second new column is called conversations and now it's time to convert the data set from ChairGPT format into Hugging Fist format. So as we have seen last step, a ChairGPT format would start with the system, which is going to be providing some sort of like a filler, and the human being is going to be asking a question, and the GPT is going to provide an answer. A Hugging Fist format is going to be a little bit similar to that, where the system is going to have this filler, but instead of from and value, it's going to be role and content. And then the, instead of having a human, it's going to be the user who's going to be asking a question, and the assistant, instead of the GPT is going to provide the answer. And having transformed from a shared GPT format into Hugging Face format, it's now time for the last step of the conversion, which is converting the Hugging Face format into a Llama 3.1 chat template, which starts with a um, text header or a header, and there's a user who's going to be asking a question, and then the end of token, and then there is an assistant with a start of a header and end of header, and then the assistant is providing an answer, and then there's an end of token. And then the user is going to be provide any sort of further response or further question. And the code it works as follows. So the Onslaught team they have already devised one of their libraries called Get Chat Template, and there is a wide variety of them chat templates available. So the one which is going to be used in this video is the Llama 3.1 chat template. The conversations that we have formatted or we have formed in the previous step as you can see here which contains all of them questions and answers it's being used here and the chat template is applying to each and every single row in this conversations and then it's going to be a game of using the data sets uh, library and then loading the pandas data frame that we have devised which contains the conversation and then using uh, the get chat template and the formatting function to format the data frame so that we receive or at the very end, we have both the Hugging Face format and the Llama 3.1 chat template. And as you can see here, so the converted conversations in here, that is the Hugging Face format, and then the text is in Llama 3.1 chat template. The next step is optional, which is testing the large language model imported before the actual fine tuning to understand if the fine tuning is going to be important or not. So in here, there is a library called language fast language model for inference. And then you're, we're referring here to the model which we're using, which is Llama 3.1. And then we're using the tokenizer uh, used with this model. And then we are giving it to the GPU because I do possess a GPU. We're asking a question, which is help me write a good example of procurement and tendering. And as you could see here, it provided a very generic answer, which is not relevant to the actual task. This response can be used if you're just searching some sort of a generic answer or if you're writing a report, but not for the RSS APC submission, because level two is all about the doing. Having tested the model pre-fine tuning, it's now time to define some of the parameters for the low-rank adaptation. I've explained this thoroughly in other videos and previous videos, which I would suggest that you can watch them. Um, defining mainly the rank and the sequence uh, length, and also defining some other bits and pieces. The next step would be defining the main parameters for the fine tuning. And as you could see here, we started with uh, weights and biases. Weights and biases are, is quite important uh, because it logs in all, all the logs for training are stored on, on in the weights and biases website. You have to have a key, which you're going to be inputting here as well. And then there are some important parameters that you have to specify for the supervised training. And all of this code is already provided by Unsloth, except for the part where I have converted between different formats. In the, the supervised training, we are identifying the text field, which is called text in our case. You can change it according to your needs. Identifying the maximum sequence length. Also identifying the number of steps for training, or if you want to have epochs, that's really up to you. Also then find the warm-up sets, which allows the model to get into shape before at the beginning of the actual training and fine-tuning, defining the learning rate and the likes. The Unsloth team in the latest Google Collaboratory notebooks, they have already shared one of the initiatives to make the model train on responses only by splitting the instructions and the responses. And that can enhance a lot 
the way the model can respond. The way to do it is quite simple. There is a library called Train on Responses Only, which you're going to be needing to use. And you feed in what is the instruction part and what is the response part. And again, this li these lines of code, they are quite systematic. You can use them um, in different models, depending on the chat template. So in, in, in here, we're using Llama 3.1. In this step, I basically printing out what's going to happen with the input IDs for that fifth entry in the data set. And here I'm showcasing uh, the labels, which is basically the part of the response only. And the next step will be training the model. Trainer dot train took me about 41 minutes. For Llama 3.1, there is about 42 million parameters that are going to be fine-tuned instead of the 8 billion. And training steps, there are 500, and we have 331 examples that I'm training on, which is not a lot, but that's the actual data that I do possess. And here, the ninth step is testing the train model, testing the LoRa adapters that we have tweaked following the fine tuning. This step is not necessary, but I'm just putting it uh, for formality purposes just to make sure that we are doing the right thing. So here I've given a question, which is what a good example of procurement and tendering. If you remember previously in the video, the answer was quite generic. And I've said that providing you with 512 tokens and the temperature to be 0.5, it's, it ranges between zero and one. So zero, that means facts only, one is quite creative. The answer it provided was pretty decent. So on a construction project, the procurement route chosen was traditional procurement route. This involved appointment of a main contractor who would be responsible for the design and construction of the project, which is a little bit aligning more and more with what I would expect, not just some sort of a generic answer. And lastly, is saving the model. I prefer to save it locally to be using it with open web UI instead of pushing it to the hub and then having to re-download it. So it's quite straightforward uh, model dot save underscore pre-trained underscore gguf and then the name of the folder which is going to contain all of the safety answers file alongside the gguf file the whole size of the llama 3.18 billion parameter fine-tuned and saved as 8-bit gguf file everything was about 25 gigabytes so keep that in mind um, the 16-bit uh, file was about 16 gigabytes, 17 gigabytes, and then the fine-tuned 8-bit was about 8 gigabytes. All in all is about 25 gigabytes. And now it's time to test the fine-tuned model and deploy it on OpenWebUI. So what I have done is that I have got OpenWebUI um, installed on my system, and I've shared thoroughly in previous videos how to do that. Um, so once you have OpenWebUI um, opened, in your browser you can go to the admin and then admin panel and then settings and then models and then you can upload the gguf file that is saved locally on your machine from here i've done this step already what i can show you is here so i've asked the question after i've chosen the model which is that one rss apc master uh, llama 3.1 underscore instruct underscore conversational. As you can see here, the name is already here. And the first question that I asked is, provide me with a good quality example of competency procurement and tendering level two. Level two is all about the doing. So I would expect that the response would contain that I did something or I was involved in some task. Uh, so I look local authority that I worked for, had the budget of whatever it is, I was involved. That's exactly the language that I'm searching for in a single stage. I carried out and then my review resulted in the award. It's an actual involvement for the task. A school that I worked on, and then I was involved. It doesn't. It doesn't need to have any sort of creativity or whatever it is. It just I need the response that contain a task that was actually done. That is the measurement of the accuracy for me. Level three would involve more about creativity and pieces of advice to a client or a contractor or to a consultant or whoever it is. So let's check that one. So the same question, providing the good example of procurement and tendering, but level three. So during the construction of a local authority, I identified. Uh, that the tender return um, wouldn't allow so i advised so that is now more and more mature that you have gained an experience and that you are identifying problems you're advising about the solution this the other example which is on an education project i identified a problem and then if you could see i advised the client and design team to revise the tender that is 100 percent accurate i then said okay let me see how it does with level one Level one is all about the knowledge, listing that you know something, no fancy jobs, no fancy tasks. I have read the RICS, developing whatever it is, and I gain knowledge, I understand the importance. That is exactly what I'm looking for.
Another use case for these fine-tuned large language models is being able to codify beta queues so that you can create lots of codified databases in a way that is efficient and accurate. One of them sheets that I was working on is a humongous uh, database for beta queues where I have codified them over the course of about a year and a half. And as you can see here, I've managed to build a text or a dialogue from the activities. So whatever activity it is, um, what is the context of it in terms of work package and what is the NRM1 coding for? It. And I've done that for about 40,000 rows of data. What I have done is that I followed the same exact steps that we have uh, done in, in here for this RICS APC fine tuning. I've done the same for beta queues. And let me show you the end results. So, an open web UI, I've deployed an AI built queue master and I've asked a question about concrete for beams C32 forward slash 40. Uh, and it provided uh, the response as I would like. Uh, to have. The main thing which I'm focusing on is if the NRM1 coding is accurate or not. So it's superstructure NRM1. I know that superstructure NRM1 is 2, 2.1 frame, that's correct. And that one I really had a lot of difficulty in making it work for large language models, the third uh, level and above. So let's check it right now. So I have the NRM1 uh, and I've built it into a database. Section 2 is here, section 2.1 is frame, and section 2.1 is concrete frames. It should have given me as well that section because I do have it in, in some of the activities in that BOQ. But still, that is going to save me a lot of time. If it's just going to be for the fourth level, then happy days. Let's check another example. The other example is contiguous uh, piles for retaining walls for the structures. So it's section 1 substructure. That's correct. 1.1 substructure. That's also correct. The level 3 is 1.1.5 basement retaining walls. So let's check it again. So... If I go to 1.1.5, that is 100% correct because contiguous piles is here. So again, it gave me up to level 3, which is going to make it quite easy for myself and for new graduates and people who are not knowledgeable about NRM1 method of measurement. And you could think about SESM. You could also think about other methods of measurement like POMI and other countries as well. So having this approach can really help you expedite your line of work. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you found this video useful and insightful. Uh, I've prepared a couple of them other videos about fine-tuning large language models and deploying them to open web UI. I'm going to be putting the links in the description below. You can also pay my website a visit at www.apcmasterypath.co.uk where I provide multiple packages for the RSS APC candidates to support them throughout their RSCS journey. Also, I provide lots of insights about the RSS APC process the different areas of competence and how you can deploy AI within the construction industry. Do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe so that you get notified about our latest videos.